my talk, I will present the benefits of Pro IGL and also why and when should we use them. Intracorneal ring segments are one of the pillars of keratoconus management, and today rings procedure are predictable, efficient, and safe. Let's start with some basics. Intracorneal ring segments provides us with corneal flattening, but the exact topographic effect of these ring models is still not well defined. Here is a brief reminder of intracorneal ring segments flattening profile. As you can see, with long rings like 210, we have a large surface of flattening with spherical effect, and with shorter one, we have a flattening in one axis and some steepening in the opposite axis with cylindrical effect. The best deal today is to have a perfect matching between ring flattening profile and ecthesia shape. As we previously said, refraction is not vision, but shape is vision. So today, intracorneal ring segments nomogram should be mainly based on keratoconus shape and accessory refractive parameters. This is a morphological classification of keratoconus. There are five types of shape, nipple, bow tie, croissant, duck, and snowman. Starting with this ectasia shape, we can distinguish good and bad morphological prognosis. The good prognosis morphology are the symmetric shape, which are nipple, bow tie, and croissant. And the bad prognosis shape are asymmetric shape, which are duck and snowman. In nipple morphology, we have a high asphericity, and with long arc ring 320 degrees, we have a very good result. And also, with bow tie morphology, we have a regular astigmatism, and when we put two symmetrical rings, we have also a good result. Croissant shape is also considered as a good morphology prognosis because in this case of paracentral ectasia, we have coincidence between topographic and coma axis. So, if we put one ring on the steepest axis, we correct both astigmatism and coma aberrations. Duck and snowman shapes are generally associated with poor prognosis because in these two cases we have no coincidence between the coma and topographic axis. I'll try to better explain with this example. Here is a case of that morphology. If we put the ring in the steepest axis, we will correct astigmatism but not coma. And if we put the ring on the coma axis, we will treat coma and we will overcorrect astigmatism. That's why the best deal in these cases is to consider asymmetric rings because they correct both astigmatism and coma aberrations. So, how can we do better? Here is a short video to better illustrate what I just said. This is a dark morphology. So if we put the ring on the steepest axis, we will correct astigmatism, but not coma aberrations. Another example of snowman with coma aberration and no coincidence between topographic and coma axis. So if we put the ring on the steepest axis, we will correct astigmatism, but not coma. The solution in these challenging cases is re uh, progressive rings.
this is a new progressive segments of IGL and as we can see we have a double progression in width and in uh, thickness and with uh, this double progression we have better effects and outcomes so the solutions today to improve results is first to consider the morphological aspect of keratoconus and second to use progressive segments in asymmetrical keratoconus I show you here the results of a paper published in December 2020. This study included 31 eyes treated with IGL Pro segments. As you can see, we have a gain of one line or more in about half of cases at three months. We have also a significant corneal flattening in both anterior and posterior surface. And the most important result is the control of coma aberration, which is directly related to the vision improvement. And here are our results in a paper recently accepted in the Journal of Refractive Surgery. We used pro-IGL segments in asymmetric keratoconus with no coincidence of topographic and comatic axis. In these cases, we found a more interesting result regarding vision. In fact, a gain of two lines or more was recorded in 75% of cases. And also we found a significant improvement of topographic and aberometric parameters, which are very encouraging results. And in my point of view, I do believe that these new progressive segments are much more interesting than basic one in case of asymmetric keratoconus. These are two examples of that morphology. The first one treated with basic ring and as you can see the astigmatism was treated but not the coma aberrations and we still have some steepening in the inferior part. The second one treated with progressive rings and as you can see, we have a better uh, morphology of uh, post-op topography. And uh, you can see that uh, both the astigmatism and coma was treated. This is a topographic differential map of progressive uh, ring. And as you can see, we have a flattening progression from the top to the bottom of uh, about three diopters. In this example, we will show you the long-term result and the stability of progressive segments IGL Pro. We have here an example of keratoconus with DAC morphology treated with IGL Pro 5 mm. We have here the post-op topography after six months uh, follow-up and also the post-op topography after three years uh, follow-up. And we can observe that after uh, three years, uh, the topography and the visual acuity still very stable. And finally, I will show you our nomogram. The first step is to exclude high keratometry, corneal scarring, thin cornea, and even good visual acuity. The second step is to choose ring diameter, depending on asphericity. And then we choose ring model, basic, long arc, progressive, depending on keratoconus morphology. In symmetric morphology, which are nipple, bow tie, croissant, we will use regular rings. In nipple shape, we will use one 320 degrees ring. And in bow tie, we will use two similar rings, and in croissant, we will use only one ring. In asymmetric morphology, we will use only one progressive segment in duck shape and two progressive segments in snowman shape. In conclusion, 
The best practice today is to adapt each keratoconus form to the perfect ring profile. We should use regular rings for symmetric keratoconus, progressive rings for asymmetric keratoconus, and don't forget that we can improve results using topoguided PRK if needed. Thank you very much for your attention.